I came to bury sleep. The cursed spite that ever I was born to set it Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? This is the excellent foppery of the world. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or take up arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. I don't think I have a pivotal moment, but I do have uh, a particular story that, of course, has influenced my whole life. Um, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and my mother was an immigrant from Russia. Uh, she came when she was six years old uh, with five brothers and a sister, moved to Hartford, Connecticut, and then to Brooklyn. And um, they weren't educated, uh, they, I think basically self-educated. Uh, by the time I came along, my mother was actually a businesswoman, was running a dress shop in downtown uh, Manhattan. Uh, and she worked all day long, uh, but would come home in the evenings. And so I got to see my mother and my father, but mostly my mother, somewhere between the hours of maybe six and seven before I went to bed. My mother had, been, had read a book that she loved called A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Of course, she read it because we were living in Brooklyn. And in that book, uh, it's about Irish immigrants, the mother reads to her daughter uh, from Shakespeare. So my mother read to me every night from Shakespeare. Now, a lot of mothers probably read Lamb's Tales from Shakespeare or the children's version of Shakespeare. My mother, who didn't go to college, read the full Shakespeare to me every night. So at the age of five and six and seven, I actually got to hear Shakespeare read at the most emotionally vulnerable time of my day because I was with my mother and got to know all of the stories and all of the characters. My mother then also read me the Bible after we got through Shakespeare and my mother cut out all of what she considered the dirty parts of the Bible like, you know, the Song of Solomon and the begats and begats. But my mother was sure there were no body parts of Shakespeare, so she read absolutely everything to me. So I got to know a lot about a lot of things at a very early age. And since I was introduced to Shakespeare at an early age, I was never scared of him. And I don't think I knew at the time that I'd be spending my life with Shakespeare. I certainly knew around the age of eight that I wanted to direct plays. I'd gone to see the ice shows and I'd gone to see children's theaters. So I knew that I wanted to be a director, not an actor, a director. And, and um, I got to do my first Shakespeare in college and then got invited by Joe Papp to direct in Central Park. And luckily and happily, I'm still doing it. And it's all because my mother read me Shakespeare when I was a child. You know, it's a long time ago, if you're asking me what I remember when I was seven. But I do know that when I went to summer camp, there was like a quiz show at night and uh, one night, and I won because I knew all the characters from Shakespeare. But the one I think I wanted to be was Benedict. I, I'm not sure why, although I realized how influential when I was a child of seeing that Midsummer Night's Dream because I wanted to be Puck. I wanted to be Mickey Rooney as Puck. I don't know, but for some reason, Benedict sticks in my mind how I had any idea what Benedict was talking about. I have no idea, but I think I thought he was, I think at seven, I thought he was witty. Um, I must have. Uh, but you know, I never wanted to act. I always wanted to direct. So it was always in my head, you know, what, what it would look like if I, if I did it with my friends. Um, and even to this day, I, I don't think there's a character that I would like to be. Although when I do a play, I'm usually many of the characters in my head, but it was the stories that got to me. And then older the language, of course, but the stories and the magic of the stories and the surprise of the stories that um, have kept me going all this time. I'm, now I 
I work on a lot of other things, you know, while I'm while I'm doing Shakespeare and know a lot more. But uh, I'm still fascinated by how he tells the story and in the different ways he tells the story and what is the story under the story, you know, that is being told. The best thing for a child is to hear the words said by a grown-up. I think in school it would be very good if a teacher, because it usually starts around the third or fourth grade where they do Shakespeare, if the teacher would read some of it and then explain the story or explain the characters and then read some more. But don't do it where they have to look up the footnotes or what the words are. And also to, to say you don't have to understand every word. I mean, I, I, I go around, talk to schools, and I say, you know, I don't, I don't think I always understand every word my friends are saying to me. Why do I have to understand every word the first time I hear a play? And to get away from the fear of, I don't understand that line, or I don't understand that word. I mean, it takes a little while to get used to it, but I think if somebody reads it to you, and reads it lively, you know, be the characters, act out funny little voices for different characters. Uh, and if parents are good about that with children's books, they could be good about that with Shakespeare. And, you know, if you need to start with Lamb's Tales from Shakespeare, that's fine, but you know, the real thing worked for me. I'm always amazed because over the years between Stratford, Connecticut and here, or in the corridor where, I, where I've been the artistic director and done Shakespeare at all these places, I'm always amazed at student performances where they get so involved. And I don't believe in dumbing it down for kids. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong than doing an hour-long version of it for, for young people. I think that's fine. Because two and a half hours, sometimes three hours of being talked at is sometimes for other, some kids difficult. But the truth of the matter is, is that my experience, for the most part, is of real attention and interest and surprise. Sure, they like fights more than other things, or they like magic more than, but that's fine. I mean, that's, that's absolutely fine. Some grown-ups do too. But I, I, I think bringing kids to Shakespeare plays is wonderful. I think it's a crime that we don't teach it in, in most schools now, uh, or that arts are not taught in schools. You know, art education is, helps socialize you in many ways. Uh, teaches you to work with others, to look at others diff uh, in a different way, teaches you to have self-discipline, it teaches you a lot of things that sometimes you don't learn by studying mathematics uh, in English if you're not that kind of a personality. But, um, but Shakespeare introduces you to character, feeling, emotion, language, history, sociology, philosophy, romance, heartbreak, pain, loss, death, birth, people and their experience and he does it better than anybody.